we are now going to explain about mutagenesis. First off, have you seen these kinds of animal? These animals have a condition called albinism, which is a type of mutation in their genetic code. There are many other types of mutation that may or may not show a phenotypic trait, and mutagenesis is a process by which mutation occurs. In the lab however, mutagenesis is a fundamentally important DNA technology which seeks to change the base sequence of DNA and test its effect on gene or DNA function. The fundamental difference between mutagenesis and DNA damage is that DNA damage is an error that shouldn't happen, and thus the DNA itself will try to repair it, whilst mutagenesis is a mutation that can be inherited to offsprings. Mutagenesis in the laboratory is an important technique whereby DNA mutations are deliberately engineered to produce mutant genes proteins, strains of bacteria or other genetically modified organisms. Various constituents of a gene, such as its control elements and its gene product may be mutated so that the functioning of a gene or protein can be examined in detail. The mutation may also produce mutant proteins with interesting properties, or enhanced or novel functions that may be of commercial use. Mutant strains may also be produced that have practical application or allow the molecular basis of particular cell function to be investigated. Inside laboratories, mutations can be induced towards, for example, cultures of bacteria and cultures with desirable traits are screened and the gene that is responsible for this trait can be identified. Early approaches to mutagenesis rely on methods which are entirely random in the mutations produced. Cells may be exposed to UV radiation or mutagenic chemicals, and mutants with desired characteristic are then selected. For example, Escherichia coli may be exposed to UV radiation then plated onto agar medium. The colonies formed are then replica plated, one in rich medium, another in minimal medium, and mutants that have specific nutritional requirement can then be identified by its inability to grow in minimal medium and isolated. Mutagenesis can be conducted in vivo or in vitro. It has two main categories, random and site-directed mutagenesis. The first part, random mutagenesis allows researchers to screen for mutations regardless of the genomic location or to quickly create a wide variety of individual mutations by creating mutations at undefined sites and this does not require knowledge of sequence or function. Early approaches to mutagenesis rely on methods which are entirely random in the mutations produced. Cells may be exposed to UV radiation or mutagenic chemicals, and mutants with desired characteristic are then selected. A number of methods for generating random mutation in specific protein were later developed to screen for mutants with interesting or improved properties. This may be done by using doped nucleotides in oligonucleotide synthesis, or conducting a PCR reaction in conditions that enhance mice incorporation of nucleotide, thereby generating mutants. In animal studies, n ethylene nitrosaurea has been used to generate mutant mice. Ethyl methan sulfonate is also often used to generate animal and plant mutants. And you can transfer its ethyl group to oxygen or nitrogen radicals in DNA, resulting in mispairing and base pair substitution if not repaired. EMS is mutagenic and also teratogenic. It produces random mutations in genetic material by nucleotide substitution, particularly by ganine or gylation. This typically produces only point mutations. Bromocyl is an analog for timon and is combined with G, conferring also a high level of point mutations. Adding the unequal concentration will induce the mismatching probability during the PCR. Adding MN2 plus reduces the base pair specificity. Milligrams 2 plus is needed to stabilize the base pair mismatch. We use TAC polymerase here since we want the components forming the mutated sequences to not have a high proofreading ability and thus end up not correcting it, allowing the preliminary mistakes. Some of this method's advantages are, it's not as complicated as other methods, economical. Different mutants, details of particular amino acids are anti-necessary. The drawbacks, however, are mutation rate might be inefficient, limited amino acid substitution, and they have to be assayed. Site-directed mutagenesis is defined as a mutation that created at a defined site and it requires a known template sequence in order for site-directed mutagenesis to occur. There are several types of site-directed mutagenesis, but we are focusing more on the M13-fit mutagenesis. Plasmid DNA mutagenesis, PCR mutagenesis, error-prone PCR mutagenesis and also nucleotide analogs mutagenesis. In order to conduct the site-directed mutagenesis, there are several components that involved in it. One of the major components is the oligonucleotide. Oligonucleotide is a synthetic single-stranded fragment of DNA used for primarying the mutated clones. 
There are several criteria for oligonucleotide primer to be fulfilled in order for the mutagenesis to occur. Firstly, the oligonucleotide must contain the desired mutation in the middle of the primer. Also, the GC content of the primer should be at a minimum of 40%. However, the GC content of the design primer cannot be too high, because it will cause the temperature to increase. After introducing the major component that involved in mutagenesis, let us proceed to the first example of the site-directed mutagenesis, which is m 13 fit mutagenesis. The mechanism of the m 13 fit mutagenesis is as below, firstly, the oligonucleotide anneals and DNA polymerase will synthesize a new strand of DNA. After that, the T$ DNA ligase will ligate the DNA. The reaction mixture is then transformed into the competent cell, E. coli. And the transformants are then selected. There are several ways that the mutation can occur. Oligonucleotide can be designed with multiple single base pair mismatch. Another way is that oligonucleotide carrying a sequence to be inserted sandwiched between two regions with sequences complementary to template. Also, oligonucleotide can also be designed by spanning the region to be deleted, binding to two separate sites on template, resulting deletion mutagenesis. The advantage of M13 fit mutagenesis is that it has high mutation rate, all mutations can be induced by M13 fit mutagenesis. The disadvantage of M13 fit mutagenesis are, it makes the population of mutant and non-mutant progeny gene inserts are unstable with single-stranded DNA. It is easily to be repaired due to non-methylated DNA. Also, it required numerous steps. The QUIKCHANG site-directed mutagenesis kit is used to make point mutations, switch amino acids, and delete or insert single or multiple amino acids. The basic procedure utilizes a supercoiled double-stranded DNA vector with an insert of interest and two synthetic oligonucleotide primers containing the desired mutation. Here are the six steps to create site-directed mutagenesis by using this commercial kit. Here is the method in brief, and then we will go through it step by step. Step 1, Plasmid Preparation. Gene in plasmid with target site is prepared for creation of mutation. Step 2, Temperature Cycling. The plasmid is denatured, and then it is annealed with the primeras containing the desired mutation. The mutagenic primer is extended and incorporated by using full KOD1 polymerase to produce nicked circular strands. Step 3, Digestion. The methylated, non-mutated parental template DNA is digested by using DPN1. Step 4, Transformation. Unmethylated, circular, nicked double-stranded DNA is transformed to the competent cell. After that, competent cells repair the nicks in the mutated plasmid. Normally, TAC polymerase that from Firmus aquaticus is used in typical polymerase chain reaction, but in high fidelity site mutagenesis PCR, KOD1 and food DNA polymerase will be used. Why? KOD1 is based on DNA polymerase from the hyperthermophilic archaean Firmococcus codacarensis KOD1. KOD1 exhibits excellent high PCR fidelity and efficiency. KOD1 DNA polymerase exhibits strong 3 single quote to 5 single quote exonucleus activity, which is proofreading activity, an activity that TAC DNA polymerase lacks. Moreover, this enzyme exhibits excellent processivity and elongation capability, showing a 5-fold higher extension rate and 10-15-fold higher processivity than others. The elongation rate of this enzyme is approximately 2 times higher than that of TAC DNA polymerase. Food DNA polymerase is an enzyme found in the hyperthermophilic Archean Paracoccus furiosus. Food DNA polymerase has superior thermostability and proofreading properties compared to TAC DNA polymerase. Unlike TAC DNA polymerase, food DNA polymerase possesses three single quote to five single quote exonucleus proofreading activity, meaning that it works its way along the DNA from the five single quote end to the three single quote end and corrects nucleotide misincorporation errors. This means that food DNA polymerase generated PCR fragments will have fewer errors than TAC generated PCR inserts. What is the difference between 3 single quote to 5 single quote exonucleus activity and 5 to 3 single quote exonucleus activity? DNA polymerases, whose primary function is to add nucleotides in the 5 to 3 single quote direction, also have exonucleus activities. Firstly, 3 to 5 single quote exonucleus activity performs a proofreading function by removing a nucleotide that has just been added incorrectly. Secondly, 
5203 single quote exonucleus activity displaces nucleotides ahead of the addition by polymerase activity. This is useful for example in removing the primers. Proper primer design is important for certain molecular biology applications. Therefore, the ideal primer generally has the following characteristics. Both primers must contain the mutation. The mutation should be in the middle of the primer. Primers should be 25-45 nucleotides long and have a GC content of at least 40%. The melting temperature, Tm, should be 78. C. The three end of the primer has to end on and C or a the advantage of site-directed plasmid mutagenesis by using QUIKCHANG kit are eliminating the need for subcloning into M13 base bacteriophage vectors. It don't need specialized vectors, unique restriction sites, or multiple transformations. It creates transformable plasmid. It is quick and done in one day. The disadvantage of site-directed plasmid mutagenesis by using QUIKCHANG kit are It is full plasmid amplification. It needs long mutagenesis primers to provide strong enough annealing of the sense and antisense strands. It is inflexible more complex mutagenesis strategies. It needs DPN enzyme to digest to get rid of wild type plasmid. It needs DNA methylation as well. Primer extension method. Both mutant and wild type versions of the gene are made following transfection. There are lots of screening required or tricks required to prevent replication of wild type strand. Therefore we require single-stranded circular template DNA. In 5' add-on mutagenesis, primers can be modified at the 5' single quote end to introduce the strand contain a suitable restriction site or a FIG promoter to drive gene expression. In PCR-based site-directed mutagenesis, the primers are designed to include the desired change, which could be base substitution, addition, or deletion. During PCR, the mutation is incorporated into the amplican, replacing the original sequence. Mutations introduced by PCR can only be incorporated into regions of sequence complementary to the primers and not regions between the primers. In insertion method, primers B and C contain the complementary sequence that will be inserted. Two reactions are performed in the first round of PCR using primer pairs I and B and C and D. These double-stranded duplexes are denatured and then annealed. Two heteroduplexes are produced wherein each strand of the heteroduplex contains the desired mutagenic codon. The overlapping ends of each heteroduplex are then filled in using DNA polymerase. The resulting amplicons are mixed with primer pair and D for the second round of PCR. The complementary ends of the first round amplicons hybridize and the PCR creates the final product with the desired insertion. In deletion method, the difference in comparing to insertion method is primers B and C are located on either side of the sequence to be deleted, and contain sequence from both sides of the deletion that match the original sequence. The rest of the steps are similar to previous mentioned steps of insertion. There have several additional notes which are based in PCR-based site-directed mutagenesis. Primer extension for deletion. Primer extension for an insertion. Primer extension for longer additions. This method's advantages are it permits complex mutagenesis strategies, amplican size may be kept short, and no DNA restriction needed. The drawbacks, however, are specific primer are required, mutated DNA is hard to replicate as the competent cell are expensive, it takes one day, it needs unique restriction sites for the final assembly of the mutant plasmid. Cassette mutagenesis it is simple method, by replacing a section of DNA sequence with a DNA fragment containing the mutated sequence. How does cassette mutagenesis be carried out, if the segment to be mutated lies between two close spaced, restriction enzyme cleaving sites? Intervening sequence is excised and replaced by chemically synthesized oligonucleotide containing the required mutation. It is a simple method for which the efficiency of mutagenesis is close to 100% and it focused in a region of the known protein. The disadvantages are the requirement for unique restriction sites flanking the region of interest. 
the main application of site-directed mutagenesis art is the basis of protein engineering. To get mutated forms of enzyme gene to study the structure, function, and stability of an enzyme, used to improve the effect of antibodies and their affinity, can be used to change the amino acid pattern of storage proteins in grains so that deficiency of amino acid, if any, can be removed.